there is a popular song written by Keith Green titled, There is a Redeemer. In the chorus of this inspired song are the words, Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Not only do these simple words underpin our Christian belief in the doctrine of the Trinity, of God the Father, who gave his Son and is still at work on earth through his Spirit. They also help our understanding of the fact that you and I need God's Spirit for the work we are doing on earth in order for it to be done and done very well. While Jesus, the Son, walked the earth, he told his disciples in John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And he says, without me, ye can do nothing. Before Jesus left the earth, he told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 7, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He did. The Holy Spirit was sent to us as an empowering ability, a power at work within you and within me. Talking about the nature of our strength through the Spirit, Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. And in verse 20, he adds, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Today, I'm discussing the topic, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. As the songwriter has put it, there is a work on earth that needs doing. Much work, in fact, to do. There is also as much a physical as there is a spiritual side to this work that is to be done on the earth. What is often lost to many of us, however, is that both sides, physical or spiritual, require the urgent help of the Spirit of God in order to be accomplished successfully. As I quoted earlier, the words of Jesus reminds us that without Him, we can do nothing. This is so true. This fact underscores our inescapable need of God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Just as the disciples needed the, consta the constancy of the wisdom and power of the Son at that time, so also do we today need the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit. My appeal, my challenge to you, brother and sister, is to crave more of God's spirit and presence. Desire strongly that sense of constant communion with the Holy Spirit, which is necessary for you to be empowered and equipped for the task that needs doing. In concluding his letter to the church in Corinth, Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, he says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. But how much of this fellowship or communion or intimate friendship, as the Message Bible puts it, do we New Testament believers enjoy today? In the Old Testament, we see instances of the children of God having communion and fellowship with God the Father. In one instance, we even find God calling out to man saying, Where art thou? That was relationship calling out. When God manifested as Christ, we know he was available and accessible to all people. Lepers touched him, the blind, the crippled, among several others. The Bible records concerning him that he went about doing good. Hear this then. If God the Father and God the Son are fellowship and communion driven, can God the Holy Spirit be different? I doubt it. I like the picture the Bible paints about the relationship between God and his prophet uh, Samuel, for instance. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, verses 15 to 17, we are told, 
Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I speak to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Again, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, after Saul had messed up as king, the Bible records that the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. There was obviously what can be described as a closeness or a form of intimate fellowship, such as Paul is telling us we need to have with God the Holy Spirit, which was at work here between God the Father and Samuel his prophet. Again and again, we see Jesus Christ relating with his disciples and others directly. He was teaching them, protecting them, providing for them in several ways. On one occasion, we know he even went into the house of Peter and healed his mother-in-law who was ill. Again, that was relationship calling out. Such fellowship, communion, and friendship is what God the Holy Spirit wants from us in our Christian experience with him today. Intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit, one with him. There is work on earth to do for mankind and for the kingdom of God. And this work can best be accomplished only in partnership with the Holy Spirit. One man of God expressed the character of a life that is in communion with the Spirit as one baptized with fire, like that of the apostles. He claims these apostles and early disciples were baptized with holy, glowing enthusiasm cut from the altar of God. According to him, they had this central fire from which every other purpose and faculty in the life gets its strength. In the words of this preacher, nothing could stop these men. Nothing could hinder their going. And as the disciples themselves testified in the book of Acts, we cannot but speak the things we have seen and heard. We must obey God rather than men. This strong imperative rings throughout all their doings and all their speech. These disciples, they had heat. They had light. They were baptized by the power of the Holy Ghost. My dear brother and sister, such should be the result of our contact and communion with God the Holy Spirit too. Because the promise they received is what is available to us as well. God the Son declared in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see, saints, God is closer to us than we think. His power at work in us is more potent than we realize. There is work to be done, and we, you and I, have the responsibility of doing this work. Be well encouraged. We have the communion of the Holy Spirit to our advantage, and we have the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit in our favor. What more can we ask for? Need I remind you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It will be well with you. My name is B.E. Ajala, and I thank you for partnering with me in this task of making ready a people prepared for the Lord. God bless you.